In today's tutorial, I want to show you how you can easily create your own LUTs that you can use in Luminar Neo and other photo editing applications. To do this, we're going to use my new favorite plugin called Color Match. This plugin will allow us to borrow the edit and the colors from another images and then save them as LUT so we can use it during the photo editing process. The Color Match tool by retouch for me is an incredible plugin and standalone software that allows you to easily create your own LUTs based on your favorite photos. Here is how it works. First, you pick a photo you like the colors of, then the tool helps you to copy those colors onto your own photos. And you can then further tweak it by adjusting controllers like brightness, color intensity and more. When you're happy with how the photo looks, you can save it. But even further, you can also save the whole color scheme as an LUT and later use it in your favorite photo editing application. When it comes to using the tool, you can use it as a plugin for Photoshop, Lightroom or Capture One, or you can use it as a standalone application. If you want to learn more about it, you can follow the link in the description of this video and at the website, you can download a demo version so you can try it on your own. However, if you decide to purchase it, you can use our discount code once again available in the description of this video. Now soon I will release a full video tutorial describing every single controller in this tool. However, for today, I want to show you how we can use this tool to easily create your own LUTs and use them in the future on your own photos. OK, so starting from the beginning, the first thing we're going to need is sample image. As you can see, I already have this image here in Luminar Neo in the edit module where I applied a simple development using classic tools like Develop Pro, Structure AI and Details. Basically, I have just adjusted things like exposure, contrast, highlights and shadows. I have also adjusted the sharpening and taken care of noise reduction. Now I have also added some clarity using the Structure AI and pushed the details using the Details tool. Now we are done with the basic development. So what we need to do is to export the image so we can move it into the Color Match plugin. Now to do that, we can just right click on the image and select Export. In the new window, we need to adjust the exporting format and it's up to you what you want to choose, but I prefer to use high quality JPEG with the original size resolution on 300 pixels on inch and 100% on quality. Don't forget to adjust the name of the image. So let's say it's image for LUT and then simply click on save. Moving into the color match tool, we're going to click on select image and then navigate towards the location where you saved your image. For me, we have it right here. So we are just going to click on it to select it and then click on open. OK, so the next thing we're going to need is the reference image or reference images. Now, there are many different ways on how you can get your reference images. You can borrow images from around the Internet. But my favorite way to do this is to visit one of the royalty free websites like Unsplash.com, then search for similar image or similar view, download the images and put them in a folder together. Once you have or once we have the folder ready, what we can do, we can click on load reference and then navigate into the folder with the images. So I'm already here, so I can just select one image and click on open. Once we do that, the application will scan the image or the reference image and try to apply the colors to our photo. Now, it doesn't look great for two reasons. One, our adjustments are all on 100%. And number two, some of the images will just not match. So this doesn't look that great. However, 
you can now use the arrows to go back and forward between the different sample images and see what look you prefer. So for me, this one looks already much better, but we can go even further. Let's have a look at another one. This reference image has much more pink on it and is much brighter, so we're not going to use that. Then going furthermore, this one has also much less colors. So let's go to another one. This one actually doesn't look that bad, but I already know that it will be the last one that will work the best on this image. Now, what are the different adjustments we can make? Starting from the top, there is a slider called Blend. The blend slider or controller pretty much works like opacity slider. You can bring it all the way down to zero and you will see that the effect you're applying from the reference image completely disappear. Then you can double click on it to reset it to 100%. And when you take the controller, you can bring it all the way up to 200% when it takes the effect and really maximize the look on your image. So for us, for this specific edit, let's go to somewhere around 80 to start. After that, we have option to adjust the luminance, color and smoothing. So with the luminance, we can adjust the amount of luminance matching between the reference image and our photo. Right now it's on 100, which is the default, but we can take the slider and bring it down. For this specific image, I think somewhere around 50 will look quite good. So let's leave it there. After that, we can also adjust the amount of color matching right now on 100. But when we bring it down to, let's say, somewhere around 60, typically you get much better result. Now, 60 is maybe too much. So let's go back to 80 and see what we're going to get. And I think this looks much better. Additionally, you can apply some smoothing to the overall look if you want. However, I think on this image, we're going to leave it on zero and stick with the color on 80 and luminance on 50. Now, let's go back to our blend where we can take the slider and bring it up a little bit. So let's go to somewhere around 90. And I think we are pretty much finished with the overall look. So what are the options we have now? Now we can save the image with the look already in it by clicking on Save As. But more importantly, we can click on Export LUT, which will allow us to save the overall look. Now we need to navigate to the spot where we want to save the LUT. And here we just need to adjust the name. So we're going to call it Seascape Sunrise. And from here, we're just going to click on Save. With the LUT saved, now we can return into Luminar Neo, where we're going to continue. In Luminar Neo, we're going to navigate into the creative section of our main toolbar, where we're going to open the Mood tool. And here we're going to click on Choose LUT Gray dropdown box. Here we're going to click on Add Custom LUT File. And in the new window, we're going to navigate towards the location where we save the LUT. Here it is, Seascape Sunrise. So just click on it to select it and click on Add. With that being done, the LUT is already on our list and applied. So what we're going to do, we're going to take the amount slider and increase the amount to apply it to the photo. And I think it's looking great. I really like it, especially when we add somewhere around 90. We can additionally also adjust the contrast of the overall look. We can make it a little stronger and even apply a little bit of extra saturation. From here, we can now close the mood tool and continue with the edit. We can apply some other tools or simply export the image and share it with the rest of the world. Now, the benefit of using the LUT is that you can use it in the future on any images you want by simply going back into the Mood tool, clicking on Choose LUT, and then into the Custom LUTs where your LUT you created earlier is already going to be ready. So just like that, in a matter of few minutes, you can take your image, bring it into the Color Match tool, then use the reference images, create the look, 
and then save the look as LUT so you can use it anytime in future. And that's it for today. If you have any questions about today's tutorial or Luminar Neo in overall, then make sure that you write them in the comment section under this video. If you did enjoy today's tutorial, then please go ahead and like and share it. And also don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss any of our future content. For today, thank you very much for watching and I already can't wait to see you in the next video.